don't manually create gears. Go to utilities, go to add-ins, scroll down to the bottom and select spur gear and click run. For perfect spur gear settings, set the module to 1.5, number of teeth to whatever you want, root fillet radius 0.5, thickness whatever you want, and for the hole diameter, let's say I have an 8 millimeter rod, I'll do 8 and add an extra 0.4 millimeters so it freely rotates along the shaft. Go ahead and click OK. Now we have a perfect spur gear. If you want to have two spur gears mesh with each other, just simply go to move copy, copy it, create copy, drag it over 24 times the module, which is 1.5, and it's the perfect distance. You want to add an extra 0.4 millimeters for 3D printing tolerances. These teeth are overlapping. To get them to not overlap, simply rotate it by 360 divided by the number of teeth times two. Here we have perfectly meshed gears. Let's say we want to simulate the motion of a mechanical part in Fusion 360. Well, right now, if we move these gears, they just kind of move around in space like so. Go ahead and click Revert Position. First, we need to take the gear bracket here, right click on it, and create components from bodies. Now, every object in our scene is a component. To simulate the motion of an object, all we have to do is create a joint. Select on the axis of the first object and the second object. Now you may notice that the gear moves up and that's not at all what we want. An easier way to create a joint is to go to assemble and go to as built joint. This will keep all the objects in their current position. Select on the first object, select on the second object, and all you have to do is switch the type to revolute, select any one of these circular axes, and we have an object that rotates. Now let's go ahead and do it on the second one. Go to assemble, as built joint, select the first object, then the second object, then it's already set to revolute and doesn't matter which circle you click, it'll just work. Go ahead and click OK. Now if we go ahead and move the gear, you'll notice it doesn't work. And that's because first we have to go ahead and ground the gear bracket. Go here, right click, go to ground. Go ahead and click capture position. Now you'll see this pin is holding it to the ground. Now if we rotate a gear, you'll notice it spins. However, it still doesn't mesh with the other gear. So how could we do this? Well, you could go to assemble and go to enable all contact. And when you do this, you can rotate it, but you'll notice it's really laggy and my computer has completely frozen up. There's a much more efficient way to do this. I'm going to disable all contact. A better way to do it is go to assemble and go to motion link. Capture position, all I have to do is select the first joint and the second joint, and then go ahead and click reverse. Now the two gears are meshed. Here's the best way to position an object exactly where you want it to go. To move an object, you can either move it around like so, only when it's a component, or you could right click and go to move copy. Now, if you drag these arrows, you could kind of move it like so and try to get it onto this axle, but it's still really difficult. So the better way to do that is to switch the move type from free move over here to point to point. Now, all you have to do is select this top circle right here and the top circle right here. And now it's perfectly positioned on the axle. Now we go back to the free move and move it down exactly where we want it to be. And here's a really easy trick that you could use to greatly increase the speed and efficiency of your workflow. The normal way you would think to toggle the visibility of an object would be to go over here to the object tree, click this down arrow, then click this down arrow, and you could toggle the visibility like so. But there's a much quicker way to hide objects. All you have to do is click and drag from right to left, and the whole object will turn blue. Now click V on the keyboard. All I have to do is drag like so, click V, drag like so, click V. It hides very, very easily. Now you do have to go back into the tree to toggle the visibility back on, but it is much quicker when you need to see behind an object very quickly. Once again, just click and drag from right to left. The whole object turns blue, click V and it disappears. Before we jump into tip number five, here's a really quick bonus tip. Usually when selecting a face, you have to be looking at that face. But let's say you want to select on this bottom face here without rotating the screen around like this. A really easy way to select faces behind an object is to click and hold. And if you drag down, you can see we can select either the top face or the face beneath it. That's how you can select faces behind objects. Now you probably know that Fusion 360 is great for creating square or 90 degree objects. What if you wanted to create an object that was a little bit more ergonomic instead of just basic extruded orthogonal pieces like this? Well, what we'll have to do is a couple of sketches. I'll show you how to do a sweep with a guide rail. This will help you create much more organic shapes. First, we'll have to create a sketch and I'll create it right here and I'll turn on 3D sketch. Now, if I rotate my view like so, I'll go to spline and select on this point here. And when I drag down, I want to make sure it's along the green vertical axis. Now you can kind of just click around and let's say I'm making some sort of uh, weird handle. So I'll just drag around like so and like this, and then go ahead and click this checkbox to confirm. Now I need to create one more line. I want to quickly modify the shape and make it a little bit less extreme. 
Perhaps it's something like this, some sort of grip. We want to make sure this top one here is tangent with each other. Now go ahead and click finish sketch. So now we can do what's called a sweep. Go ahead and select on a sweep like this, change it from single path to path plus guide rail. And we'll select on this face right here. And the path will be the straight line and the guide rail will be this curved line like so. And now you can create some really cool, more organic, even ergonomic shapes like this hand grip. I hope you found these tips helpful. I have free tutorials on my 3D Printer Academy tutorials channel, but if you want a much more in-depth, slower paced learning environment, check out my most popular course, Fusion 360 Masterclass. I run occasional sales and launches, so check the description for more details. My name is Steven, thanks for watching and happy printing.